as we wrap up this example and try to figure out what, we, what lessons we've learned, let's go all the way back to our initial guess for this asymmetric frame that had columns that were of different lengths, although the same bending rigidity, and an asymmetrically placed uh, load. And that is that initially we thought that maybe it might sway to the right because the load was placed to the right. We looked at the moment diagram that might go with that. We came up with a conflict that didn't make a lot of sense. And so then we thought, well, maybe it would look something more like what you see here. And that had a conflict too in the way that the moment diagrams would work. And that conflict was that this right-hand column was not going to be a reverse curvature. And it, if we resolved all this, then we had reverse curvature in the left column. We had the more typical moment diagram for the beam that we might expect in this kind of case, that the right-hand column would have just single curvature. And that all meant that the structure, we thought, would sway to the left. Now, when we did all this, we didn't come up with any specific numerical values uh, for the moments. Um, this was enough just to work through to try to understand which way we thought the structure would sway. When we got to the end, what we did find was that indeed the structure did sway to the left, that ultimately it was swaying towards the more flexible column, that the longer column. And uh, we'd like to perhaps do a lot more parameter variations on this to decide whether or not that is uh, a generally true kind of statement, but uh, I think we'll find that that is relatively uh, the case. Right? We found out that the moment diagram did indeed become uh, come very close to the kind of shape of the moment diagram that we had anticipated, and that of course goes along with this final deflected shape that we uh, are estimating. Right? And so again, the, the, probably the only thing we can take away from a big picture uh, of the lesson, other than the, the technique for how you have to be very careful to go through each and every uh, last step on the execution of the slope deflection method, which can be difficult to do. Um, but the bigger picture performance lesson here is that we had asymmetry caused by both columns and the, the load being at the, the mid, not the midpoint, but offset a little bit. And that caused the structure to want to sway towards the more flexible uh, side. Right? And again, we'd like to do a little bit more um, work on this parameter-wise to see how, that, how general that might be. If you do put this structure into a computer structural analysis model, allowing for the members to have axial flexibility, meaning they can shorten or elongate, you're going to find out that the overall moments are very similar to what we have uh, shown here for the member ends that that uh, axial rigidity is fairly high, that this model that assumes that we have no shortening or elongation actually works out uh, pretty well. You will also find that this, this structure does sway to the left. If you decide to put the left-hand column the same height as the right-hand column, there again you're going to find that actually the structure will just slightly sway to the left with the load being placed slightly to the right. So that asymmetry and that, that notion of the frame swaying towards the more flexible side does seem to be uh, generally a, a, a reasonable rule of thumb to take away from this.